Welcome back to Caffeine and Exotics, live from Caffeine and Octane here at the garage. And what is the garage? Well, the garage is the future home of their restaurant. And we can't wait because every Saturday when we're doing this show, we're going to be having nice, beautiful, exotic cars out there. But real quick, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Rob D'Amico alongside the president of Merlin Auto Group, Adam Merlin. Adam, tell us all about your background. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Um, I got into the, into the car business right after graduating from business school. And um, I've always been a Ferrari fanatic ever since I was five years old. I told my mom if I had to live in her house because I couldn't afford a house because I put all my money in a Ferrari, <laughs> that's what it was going to be. And really ever since, we've built the largest independent Ferrari sales and service center in the country. And we help people every day go out and find their dream cars, whether it's a Ferrari or whether it's a, an everyday car. You know, it doesn't have to just be a Ferrari to, to accomplish your dreams and show people how to own those, show them what it takes to maintain those cars. There's so much mystery when it comes to buying and owning an exotic car, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, a Rolls Royce, anything. Everybody's so afraid of the cost of maintaining the car and what I don't know about the car. And we've really built our business on teaching people what it is they need to look for, how to buy the car, how to make the right investment, and what it's really actually gonna cost them over time. Kind of like, you know, what they say, if you want to make a, if you want to make a, what is it, a small fortune in racing, you start with a large one, right? That's right. Like you have a lot of racing experience, which kind of goes along with Ferrari, right? I do, man. So uh, my background is I, I started back in radio back in the day, like in 93, got into racing, uh, got in late. I didn't start racing until I was like 38 years old. So, and I didn't go to traditional route of getting in a cart and moving your way up. I got in the way of doing something where you got into the open wheel stuff with Skip Barber. I did Bertle Ruse, and then I did the uh, Ford Performance School out in Miller Motorsports Park and got into racing that way. Today, currently, I do some video stuff and do some work behind the scenes with the Big Green Egg, so, so still having a lot of fun, but enjoy racing and fast cars. There's no doubt about that. And that's what this show is gonna be built about, is to learn about a car and whether you're making the right investment and how you wanna do it, whether it's a daily driver, like you mentioned, sure. or, or if this is something I'm trying to really get an investment in. You know, the coolest thing about cars and really what's drawn me, the automobiles, it's, it's like a lifestyle. It's not just, you know, there's a lot of people, yeah, I drive my Toyota, my Honda to work every day, and that's just your car. But when it comes to your dream car, when it comes to the collectible cars, when it comes to race cars, right? It's a lifestyle. Caffeine and Octane at the garage. It's going to be a lifestyle restaurant. You're going to pull up here and it's going to be, I mean, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, oh, McLarens. I mean, it's so, awesome. you know, go to breakfast on Saturday and there'll be like a P1 in the, in the <laughs> outside. It's going to be unbelievable. And that's really what I learned was when I started buying and selling Ferraris, I realized that these cars, it's simple economics. It's supply and demand, right? Enzo Ferrari built his business on, uh, and, and what he said was, we're always going to have, we're always going to build one fewer car than the market demands. When you do that, right, very simply, it keeps your prices high. Yeah. When more people want it than there are examples, the prices stay high. So when we realized, when we started investing in Ferraris, we realized if you can buy them at the bottom of the depreciation cycle, there's a distinct possibility that you can buy one, drive it for a couple years, sell it, and get all your money back. You know, when you go and buy that brand new car at a, at a car oh, dealership, that's you drive happening. off the lot, <laughs> right, you lose 50%. Absolutely. So that's the thing about the Ferraris, but it's so important to know all of the nuances. There is a lot of mystery behind it, educating the consumer about it. And really, you know, there's a ton of different valuation tools and all that stuff out there. But we're really going to get into the nit and gritty of what you need to know and all that stuff. Um, to, to really make it interesting. And I know we're talking to Ferrari today, but w w some of the other brands as well, that c are they capable of doing that same exact thing? Look, I have a client who bought an Acura Integra for $5,500 eight years ago. That car today is worth $45,000, and it's an Acura. It's inexpensive to maintain. And, and, and why did it go up in value? Well, A, the car market right now is super hot. Unique cars, any car that's, that's collectible, is really hot. So, you know, and then look, there's a lot of cars, when you talk about supply and demand, there's cars that are being made today that are super expensive supercars, that there's not a lot of them, and people ask, are they gonna be collectible? Kind of like, you know, the Koenigsegg that we saw at Caffeine and Octane the other day. Yeah, that's amazing, we did. We saw one of those Koenigseggs out there, I think it was like $2.5 million. An amazing car, no doubt about that. Let's take a look at that one. 